All right, welcome everybody. As promised, today we're going to start working on horse anatomy and in general how to draw a horse. So we're going to start with the structure, or I'm going to start with the structure, and then go into the details a little more in the next days. Today I'm probably just going to stick to the overall structures, uh, structure and landmarks. Uh, so let's get started. I have a number of pictures here up my screen. I've got some on the canvas so that you can see them. We're going to choose one and uh, start with it. So the horse, uh, first, why the horse? Well, because the horse is generally in all creature drawing courses used as a base for any quadruped anatomy or is a starting point so it's going to be good for us as well maybe make it a little larger here something like that so uh the first thing to notice is that um horses or in this case let's let's say quadrupeds have landmarks and uh they can help us construct the figure of the animal using simple geometric forms. In this case, uh, for the horse and again for many other mammals and especially herbivores and ungulates, it's a, let's see first if I have a decent brush, because I want to make sure I do. Let me use this. It's, so it's the um, wedge shape, so the sort of triangular looking shape. It's the uh, box. So I get a perspective right at least. And it's the cylinder. So these are uh, the basic shapes. So I get it right. I'm missing laziness with me. Hold on. All right. Otherwise, my brush behaves very jaggedly. See if it's hooked. Yes. Okay, let me just redraw the cylinder then. Better. Okay, so wedge, box, and cylinder. And especially the cylinder can be modified a little bit to be used in various uh context. Hey, student 17, what's up? Thanks for joining. Uh, so we're going to see how to use these simple forms now. Good evening to you. Well, it's going to be evening soon. It's afternoon here. I guess it's almost, um, it's going to be midnight soon there. Probably 45 minutes. All right. So, um, now how we place these shapes will determine the, the, the volume of the horse. And uh, obviously they can be stretched and adapted uh, depending on the pose and uh, etc. Now I might have chosen a pretty difficult one because this horse, I can still see the landmarks, but this horse is very muscular. So let's see what we can do. Um, first off, let's actually find these landmarks. I wonder on top of it. So the first landmark is kind of the, uh, how do you call it, like the base of this rounded triangle on the wedge. And it's going to be where the humerus and the um, end of the, uh, it's called the shoulder blade in this case, attach, which is here. So it's one is here and the other one is somewhere inside here. So again, um, let's see actually if I have a better photo for this because this dude is muscular. Uh, this may be a little easier. Maybe in this. Unfortunately, these photos I found were pretty small. No, this is too small. You know what? Let's just use that. So somewhere inside there, there's going to be a bone attaching, uh, the, the shoulder blade attaching to the humerus. <laughs> then there is the back of the humerus or the end in this case. So the humerus would be somewhere here. 
like that. Then another landmark is the uh, top of the spine here, that where the neck attaches basically. I guess we could say it's the cervical where the cervical area starts. Um, or actually, I believe uh, ends. So it's called the uh, thoracic crest, something like that. I'm not good with terms, so I apologize if I butcher anything, uh, but the information should be fairly accurate. So this is another landmark here. And using these, we can already start uh, drawing the, uh, the wedge, but let's go ahead and get the others as well. So another landmark is uh, right here, is basically the knee. So uh, it's, it's the knee, well, it would be the elbow <laughs> on, a, on a biped uh, figure or creature, but in this case, it's, it's like a knee. And then of course we have the wrist because these would be uh, fingers technically. Um, so actually, no, I might've got it wrong. Hold on a second. So uh, shoulder blade, shoulder blade, uh, humerus. No, this is already, this is already the start of the technical hand. So uh, because it would be like one, two segments for the arm, quote unquote, and then the rest would be like a very long hand. This is the carpus over here. And this is the metacarpus or metacarpals, and these should be the phalanges, the very last part. Okay. I tend to still get confused, so I do have I do have uh, books and references open, so I'm trying to get them as right as I can. Hey, what's up guys from Twitch? Uh, Chase says, can I draw horses? Nay. Yeah, of course. And hello, Emperor Cheese. So, so uh, humerus, forearm, uh, radius ulna, I think they're fused in the horse. And then we have basically what is the hand, but it doesn't matter. The point is right now, remembering the landmarks, which are these. Then for the back, we have, um, let's see, I believe, I believe we have the head of the femur around here somewhere. It's hard to tell, it should be somewhere around here. Then we have the lumbar region and we have another um, little crest. So the spine would be something like if this is the tail and this is where the head goes, uh, we have a little hump and then another hump here <laughs> over the horse. Uh, I believe, okay, st <laughs> student, student 17 hopped to Twitch. So <laughs> welcome. Yeah, I do. Cool. Yeah, I think you get uh, a little less latency on Twitch but you can follow both if you want to have double the content. So, um, right. So um, the hips would be somewhere here inside. We are not really concerned with that now, but we have one landmark, two. The knee would be here. So this would be where the knee is. Then we have the uh, tibia and fibula here. And we can't really, see, oh, we can see in the back here. Uh, it's like where the, uh, it's the calcaneus technically, is where the um, tendon attaches here, which would be the Achilles tendon in the human. I don't know if it's called the same in the horse, honestly. Uh, doesn't matter. So we have one and let's pretend it's over here too. So it's in the back. And then we have, again, the phalanges area. Let's pretend it's something like that. So with these, we can start building our uh, horse, uh, at least the body. Actually, let's, you know what? Let's go over the head as well. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just, well, it's a very recognizable uh, uh, shape or form. So we got the uh, zygomatic arch. 
right here. Or in this case, in this one, let's see, it's probably something like that. Then like this. And then just the center of the face. So let's go ahead and add some simple forms. We can join these remembering or observing how the actual form looks like. So we can simplify it with a wedge shape here. Something like that. It doesn't have to match what's uh, outside precisely, just being the ballpark. And this can run um, following the back of the shoulder muscles. So these are uh, should all be, or this should all be, let's see if I'm actually wrong. I haven't really memorized it yet. Uh, those should be uh, triceps, I think, I think, probably. <laughs> so these are gonna be grouped together to form this sort of a wedge shape. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then we can use uh, a box for the back. Oops. Or some sort of box. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be exactly a box because it's it's a little curved, technically. So let's see how can I do it. There's a little bit of a curve to this box. It could flatten it out technically, so it could become something like this, probably, with a little hump in the middle, and then go down like that, like a saddle. Could be something like that as well. Uh, but I tend to try to follow uh, this kind of structure that I'm adding here. So it's a little more curved, maybe with a point in the middle. And go down. And it goes uh, further down in the back compared to the front. So the front is somewhere probably around there. It's gonna be uh, probably easier from other angles when I get other pictures. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it a bunch of time, a bunch of times to study, um, like to trace over photos and see a little better how the construction works. So this goes. It's important to draw through. So this goes on the other side since it's basically eye level. It's gonna be on the same height, and then it goes down here, and then we can connect it like this, something like that. So this goes back as well. And obviously it doesn't exactly meet like a box, so it's not this because we it, it's spread, the legs are spread. Um, we can use the same sort of saddle thing that I, I had here, just a little more pointed then I had it just a little. I can bump this up probably a notch. So this is a three-dimensional shape. We can simpl simplify it even further. Uh, and so if we imagine this going through, it is some sort of boxy shape. Well, let's actually leave the box for now. It's easier. So you can already see this does have the landmarks of the horse and the shapes do recall what a horse is or how a horse is. So, oops, let spill my water again. Then we can connect them using a cylinder. So something like this. And it doesn't have to be, you know, to go around the actual belly. You can be a little simplified for now. As long as it has that little bit of curve, it's classic to the horse. So it does need a little bit of curvature. Um, if we draw through this one, you can see it's probably going to attach somewhere here. So just a little more. Something like that. All right, we can use a cylinder for the neck too. 
throw something like that. It should be probably just a little larger here. Something like this. All right, it's a tapering cylinder in this case. So as I said, um, we can always adapt and change the uh, the various forms to to conform to what we need. Now the head is, huh? It's another sort of wedge shape, but not quite like that. It's more, it's something like a kite on the top, like a squarish kite. We can use the um, the top of the eye socket as well, actually, as a as a landmark. Forgot that, or something like that. And then the nostrils. So it's kind of a squared off kite. Um, it would you would do this if it were to be a little more dynamic, but for now. Just remember the simple shape. It's like an envelope, so you can build on top of it and further detail the shape later. Then it comes down like this, simplifying this part as well. And I can probably use a straight line here to connect with the back of the um, of the face. And obviously, the eyes are going to be something like that. This is something like that. Now the eyes would be the probably let's see the easier easiest way would be to add another cylinder through it and do something like that. This does not exactly look like a horse, but the base form is there. So this again, this is an envelope. Uh, the ears are secondary for me, so just leave them for now. As for the legs, again, cylinders, they're attaching here. And so it's something like this. Remember, the whole, uh, the whole limb starts here. So this should be, should go up this way because it, the elbow is here. Now, I probably need, for this one, since I'm tracing it over, I need to do something like that. Or I can extend this, probably a little easier to extend it, beyond here. Again, as I said, this, this guy is a little muscular, so... You can adjust him. Okay, something like that. So there's a go down here. So, so this would be the center line of the horse, basically. And this is where it's going to split a little bit when it moves. So this can move a bit up. Like it could come out a little bit, probably difficult to tell here, but it would come out like this if one leg is further than the other. This is fairly static, like this pose, so it shouldn't be a, a big deal. And let's use another cylinder here. Now for the um, wrists, technically, we could use boxes or we can use um, spheres, like elongated spheres. I prefer to use boxes because it helps to define the perspective a little bit more. It's a little trickier because you're not exactly sure where they are. Let's increase the opacity just a little bit so they can see it. So you can see it's probably going something like in this direction, something like that. But you're almost eye level. So if our eye level is here, so these would go up ever so slightly. It doesn't really matter in this one. But it's something like that. Another cylinder here with a ball at the end. So I forgot to add the ball. 
sphere to not exactly a sphere. Okay, something like that. To the shapes uh, forms. Right, with simple forms. So we have a, another tapering cylinder with a ball spear at the end, something like that. It is a little farther than the other. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> now the phalange part is a little more tricky because there is a lot going on for a very compressed space. Usually it's pretty small. Mm -hmm. So it's another cylinder that wrap, I hope you can see it well enough in the video, it wraps around, attaches onto the circle, goes down this way. And for the hoof, the shape is something like this. So you can simply, it's a skewed tube, skewed cylinder, because we have one and two surfaces. Uh, either this is the, it's going this way, or if it's, this is the back and this is the uh, front, which is like this. So the hoof is something like this, where the top plane is a little skewed. Uh, this is a like, giant nail, so that's how I'm going to treat it, something like that. It's always fundamental to think about the plane where the horse is standing, if it is standing. For my creature, it's going to be kind of floating in the water, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. I think this hoof is all too much. Okay, it's going to be something like that. And in this case, the, the ground plane is something like, let's see, something like, probably something like this, because that's a little forward compared to that. So it's very thin, thinly stretched, almost ground level, something like that. Feel free to ask any question, by the way, if you want. Um, so the front is done. You can take care of the back. And uh, obviously there are a number, of way, a number of ways you can tackle this. I'm still going to use tapered cylinders for this part. So attaching to that box. Somewhere here, we can actually do, we can split the box. I usually split the box here. So it kind of goes in like that. So I hope it's visible enough. So the you can see a little bit of the bottom of the box and then this attaches something like that the further away it is a little bit confusing, but it basically goes into this, this is like, um, it's something like, uh, let's see, let's pretend it's a normal box, it's not skewed, it's something like this, okay? So if this is the box, this is not perspective, perspective would be here, so this is going in, and then it has that thing, is going up compared to the actual shape and then we have another angle technically that goes down here so that it's something like that not visible here because the perspective i use but something like that uh the back here the what are these so it's one two so the, the knee we have uh, the uh, ankle Again, another box. Technically, I could add that little bit of uh, muscle attachment in the back, tendon attachment, volcanoes, however you want to call it.
Now for the um, meta parcels, generally I still use a, a cylinder, but sometimes it's just better to visualize a box like this because it's pretty thin. So this part is kind of a little more like this. It's like a gun magazine, <laughs> have a shape. But it's easier to just use a cylinder, so it kind of nestles a little better into the ball here. So another ball. And then same thing. So this, make sure you actually connect it here and then this goes around. Obviously these are abstractions, it's not really doing that, but it helps to visualize the, the volumes of the ports a little easier. Same thing with the hooves or hoofs. This is a little, probably a little forward compared to the other again. So something like that. And let's go back to the ears now, just I didn't add them before. So this is a very simple horse shape. You can tell it's like these forms are quite fitting for it. We can add the ears as cylinders first. So you can add some cylinders and then cut a little, I don't know how to call it. Um, it's like you cut diagonally into that. It's a little more complicated than that, but it's easy to abstract it that way. It's something like this. So if this is a cylinder, you you kind of cut into it like this, right? So this, you kind of slice it. It's like uh, slicing a uh, uh, bamboo, right? Bamboo branch, just slicing it like that, cutting through. Not not uh, perpendicular to the direction of it, but diagonally, something like that. Okay. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and use these things on other horses. Let me see if I can actually use one of the photos that I had prepared, because I didn't realize, oops, this is, not saved, so hopefully I'm not gonna lose it. Um, okay, let's try this one as well. This is not too small. Is it here? It is still kind of small. Make it just a tad larger. Something like that. <clears throat> Decrease the opacity a bit and use another layer so uh beveling uh it's not exactly beveling because that would mean you're making if i'm not wrong i'm not confusing with something else wouldn't it be like mm, splitting the corners basically making it rounder like chamfer tool, something like that. No, this is more like cutting, like really slicing through the cylinder and making two distinct shapes. All right, let's find landmarks here too. One, two, probably somewhere here. Then we have the compressed probably trying to use my laser sight <laughs> something in the back here probably something like that. I think it depends on the angle it may be babbling it could be <laughs> sorry my English is pretty bad then the elbow Here, wrist. This is this kind of perspective. It's 
something something like this probably two top of the head bottom of the jaw nostrils rest in the back Let's see the head of the humerus is probably here sorry not the humerus the uh, femur great trochanter let's see it's somewhere around here with the muscle is something like that knee is here here, so you can use two points for this. Eventually, it could be like two shapes. The top of the knee, bottom of the knee. I'm trying to imagine where it is on the other side. Probably, let's see, given the perspective. Something like here, maybe? Let's we'll see. Obviously, it's always a guess. It's very hard to guess with photos. Uh, way easier to do it with um, real life animals because not only they turn but you can actually perceive the volumes distance hmm. tell what this is doing but what I'm gonna do is this sort of perspective I'm gonna assume it's going back from there okay so you can kind of tell it's a horse <laughs> a very strange horse but by connecting those lines uh, let's actually do it with another color and another layer and actually tell is indeed a horse so even even using a little more gesture lines instead of being super precise so the bone actually is probably somewhere around here in the inside and actually start visualizing the shape of the horse even with simple gesture lines let's see okay it looks like it's kind of... Okay, the face is a little weird. But apart from that... Let's go ahead and use the abstraction here. I'm going to, f I'm going to follow the contour this time. It's, it's, it's just about bending those simple forms a little. Right. Keeping perspective in mind, something like that. So it's important to notice that the um, wedge shape of the front part is not following the scapula here. Let's see if I can actually show you a little skeleton since it's probably going to be easier to understand this, I hope. 
this one should not have a copyright. I've got some images from the internet. So this is what it is, what the, the horse skeleton looks like. And uh, the wedge does not follow this anyway. It is an indication, the spine is an indication, but it doesn't follow it 100%. So it's because it's a little bit backwards, it's just following the crest and attaching to the crest to make the volume look a little better. Let's see if I have another one. Uh, this one from Shannon something. All right. Something like that. So this is the basic structure of the horse. But uh, it's not important to get into the whole bone thing. Uh, it's probably better to just start with those simple volumes. Let's see if there's something else I can share. This is this from Goldfinger. Um, no, it's something from James Gurney. The other is, uh, I got some slides from a course I took uh, a few years ago, but I don't think I can share them. So, never mind. But the wedge is gonna go up here to the top of this crest. In the middle, this is where the pectoral muscle is attached as well. You can kind of see the split, and you can do this if you want, if you prefer. I can make it uneven. I'm just going to go with a simple box. The back of the scapula. Uh, it could also be used for the that part of the wedge eventually depend depending on the pose obviously again this is an abstraction so there are no hard rules they, they can always be broken depending on the pose or specific subject I've drawn a lot of horse poses like these and it's still hard to remember everything. For some reason I just can't get myself to remember everything that is everything that I need to remember. This is I can't quite tell because of the main it's probably going down here. A little. Not too much. Another cylinder, it's here, it's, it's clearly. I can't quite tell what the folks are doing, so let's try something like this. 
to come down. That old boxy shape. You know what, I think this should be a little further back. This should be a side plot. No, this is no, it's correct. This is actually the front part of the box. That's the front part of the box, because the attachment of the Great Turkander is probably somewhere buried in the muscles. So this is the box going around something like that, probably. This is the front of this box. I'm gonna make it a little larger. <laughs> We're gonna go up. So I'm going up, the box would be connecting this way. I'm just going up because that's what a leg does. So just adapting it, then it goes back, something like this. That's right. Then we go towards the back here. Probably inclined just a little bit. Yeah, I'm not convinced by this position. Let's leave it that way. <clears throat> Box. I'm totally eyeballing the perspective, so it's likely going to be a little off. This box. Well, we can't quite see. The whole thing. This is technically rotated a little bit. This leg is rotated towards us in this direction. Well, that's facing that direction. This is rotated, so it's like it, it's facing this. Uh, it's facing the camera, basically. This point here, it's basically non volumetric there's not much volume there so I just
Let's do the... Hmm. It's coming towards us. But it's below, so let's leave it this way. Can't see it well. I still can't see it well. <laughs> like that. And the hoof can be simplified in different ways. As I said, it can be that sort of shape. Like this. Or it can be something a little more like this. So something square where you can see the sides. Obviously this is the front. I kind of like the circular one. Not perfect from two areas. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell where it should go. But this is probably supposed to go in this direction. It looks bad. You literally cannot see it here, so no, let's pretend it's something like that. Actually, we have the tail. Uh, I'm not sure where it ends. Probably here somewhere. And then we have here. One other way I use to draw the eyes is slightly. Uh, not slightly, it's just cones rather than cylinders. It's technically a cylinder that is that, that cuts into another shape, something like that. So it's like there is a cylinder, and then something cuts right into it, like say here, it cuts around the cylinder or into the cylinder. And so you you only see these points here on the side because they're technically like cones. See how this is. I'm gonna do a bunch of these today. Um, another couple maybe, and then and then draw. Just draw from reference. I can try to simplify a reference using this structure here. See, the others, I believe the other photos are pretty lame. Too small. You can make it slightly bigger without pixelating it too much. Okay, it's not too bad. It's blurry, but it doesn't matter. Because in any case, we don't care about detail. Let's do this, let's see. is the eye level obviously not the ground probably something perspective something like maybe yeah it's like a little below eye level here Of them just from 
instead of um, racing. Obviously, again, depending on the pose, it will shift a little bit. So this is a little tricky because this leg is off center. So it would be something like that, technically. And also the neck has some bands that go elsewhere, not just into that box. And probably, this is probably the eye level. Right shape. Jaw. And I could, okay, let's see if we can do this one. Technically, it would be another plane here, so it's easy to identify where the eye is. This could be pushed forward just a little bit. It's all about chiseling, so little by little, chiseling the simpler forms into more complex. <laughs> it's probably something. And the panther would be here. It's, uh, it's very blurry, but probably goes inside in this direction. And this is still part of that box here. Something like that would be the bottom of the box. Straight here. Yeah, perspective at all. This is like tilted. So it's like there's a split here because the leg is a little farther or so this is probably just a little lower so the scapula goes in this direction a little bit and this is pushed back uh, 
I got stuck. Slightly tilted. It's longer now. I did a bunch of these, so I obviously know how it should look like or where it should be, more or less. But otherwise, it's it's better to use slightly less blurry photos than the ones I came up with. Because I got a lot of other photos, but they're they tend to be um, a little more dynamic, so they're probably not good for the base explanation. This probably goes off this direction. Hmm. This is turned. I think something like that. This is really hard to tell. One is a little further back and the other is down, completely down. Yeah, okay. So this is the basic basic structure of the horse. Now we're gonna group these. This one's probably too small. Put them on the side or just move here. I'll take another photo of the ones that I have here. Something not too complicated, not to embarrass myself too much. And use one of these for uh, trying out. Okay, why don't we do a back one? Okay. All right. It's just a back photo. So same thing, it's just that now when I do it from photo, I am more focused on the gesture of the thing. So in this case, I'm starting with a simple gesture, still remembering those um, elements, those parts that make it up, but I want to make sure that I get the overall sense of the pose. In this case, it's got one of the legs up, and it goes down, and the hoof kind of intersects here. A little far off, it doesn't matter. We have the tail. This, technically, the tail is just uh, probably like this part of bone, and the rest is all hair. We had a little bit of volume, just... I was lucky enough to live near some horse ranches, so I did draw some horses from left. It's really hard. <laughs> it's definitely a lot easier to just copy them from photos. So I'm always thinking about landmarks. So this is the um, Alcanius. So. 
here, always considering the distances between the various parts. And the overall perspective, I believe, is something, let's say, something like this. If we're trying to use simple shapes to describe what the action is. line so this would go down here so it's probably somewhere around here the other is at the front a little the large side let's I'm about to get the overall gesture so in this case I want to get the stance right All right here's my landmark so the landmark so one and two then three, you have the ears and the head is going down, something like this. So now I can construct the thing. So center. This should go, should kind of go into the back of it. So let's come down just a little more. And it, it attaches here in the back. The volcano is sticking out. The box can be anything, just as long as it conveys the direction, it's fine. Let's see if we can draw at least two with only the reference like this. And ball here. The hoof is something like this. Right, something like. If this doesn't look good. Technically it does a little, there's a little hump there. Something like As I said before, this part tends to look more like a rectangle, so it's just not as visually appealing when drawing the structure. You can actually see a little bit of the belly here just a little bit. And with this kind of extreme foreshortening, I do tend to exaggerate distances a little bit. So it might be a little a little more sideways than it should. This we have Back of the yours somewhere there. Something like that. Draw the neck. And then from the back, it's probably, let's see, this is tricky. It's probably something like this. 
Jesus. Use balls for these two, it's just that sometimes it helps with the perspective if they are boxes. But as long as the main landmarks are there, it shouldn't be a huge deal. So this is what something like that. I can't quite see what this does but probably more like that it doesn't look as good on that side it's pretty weird looking i think it would be better to just leave it this way okay something like that let's do another one real quick let's try let's see Another simple one. Okay, how about this? I should find larger photographs. Definitely. Here? Yeah. I'm gonna do a landmark separately this time. Or not, yeah. No, let's keep it this way. This is a little more dynamic. So, again, gesture first. Now this is gonna, is gonna require a split. I'm gonna to have to split the front part because it's really too different from one side to the other. Right, that's a gesture. Landmarks identified here. Center to face, nostrils. Here's like a triangle going on here. Technically, for the, the bone above the socket. Ears are, I think they are, I don't know, they're still oriented towards us a little bit. Yeah, not that much. The main is really sec tertiary, not even secondary. Got a bunch of muscles going down here. So here is where I'm gonna split it. This is higher, so it's coming down. It would be like this, but one is higher, so it's gonna stay up. Maybe something like this, and the other is a little lower. So it's gonna go down this way. Something like that. It's also a little further away. Hmm. 
you know, this, this is pushed, so it's breaking the actual wedge shape, it doesn't matter. It's still abstract it out. Hey, we got some spam. I guess the channel is growing. <laughs> spam on Twitch. I did get some spam comments on YouTube as well. Right? After the fact. <laughs> I'm doing this because I can show you, just to, to show you that you can basically draw any pose and I'm going to do more dynamic poses tomorrow with the same method. Complicated, so it's something like this. It's going down. It's a little trickier. This box is kind of straight. Ah, uh, but these generates are everywhere. Yeah, I don't know why they do it. It's uh, really annoying, honestly. Really annoying. I don't know what they hope to get <laughs> doing that. At least it's not the six months I have in my streams. Wait, you are actually streaming now? Like recently? I thought you did stream in the past, but you were not doing it anymore. Been a while, but I want to do more gaming streams. Oh, uh, let me know when you do. Actually, I'm just gonna subscribe to your channel, so <laughs> I'm gonna be notified. Were you planning on streaming? trying to get tired of selling there so slowly sometimes I just add some extra stuff here oh you don't stream on your personal channel yeah, I mean this one. Isn't it this one with the account you're currently using? That's what I mean by your channel. Yeah, cool. Industrial, industrial media magic. Sounds a lot like industrial Latin magic. <laughs> wink, wink. Oh, you share it. Let's see. Okay, there's something wrong here. I think this is too. Where the name came from? Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. When it's a little too long. I think we're done with this for today. It's, sometimes I just edit the perspective, the way the perspective is, because I'm not happy with how it looks. This is one of the cases. Okay. 
muito ruim. And the head of the horse is too far the back. Or something like that. That's where my perspective skills start bothering me because some of these are not quite in line. So this can really break the whole feeling of perspective because if they're off everything is gonna look kind of off like right now i also think this butt is too big but overall it's pretty decent as of course Okay. Sometimes I feel like this has been pasted on the background. I wonder. Hmm. That's weird. Could have been. Anyway. Okay, um, I think we can stop here today. About an hour, 20 minutes. Um, Tomorrow I'm gonna to do more structural copies and maybe start introducing some of the musculature, which I'm not exceedingly familiar with, so bear with me. All right. Hopefully my computer's not gonna die now because I have to save it. But I feel like the posing for this one is a good candidate. Like you mean for the Kelpie? Um, it could be. Yeah, I'm still gonna use probably one of these for the reference. Uh, I have another good bunch, like 20 or so to choose from, so we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm just going to analyze a little more musculature in the upcoming days, but probably some more structure tomorrow. All right, you guys. Uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, 17 more hours, let's go. Uh, hopefully less, oh, I mean, a lot of studies, certainly. Um, might take as long to get to the final Kelpie though. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. I am going to see you tomorrow. Have a good one.